Welcome to State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. Humanity will not survive in case if indigenous languages and peoples disappear. To strengthen the participation of indigenous peoples in the United Nations, point nine. Congratulatory message of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosyan, to the newly elected President of Iran. The speech of the Speaker of the Republic of Western Armenia, UN Human Rights Council, referred to the ethnic cleansing of Artsakh at the session of the UN Human Rights Council. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State visited the Genocide Memorial in Armenia. Armenian chess players returned from Batumi with 12 medals. Let's support Western Armenia television. In case of Western Armenia, 104 years of occupation of our lands and ongoing plan of extermination of our population has caused the loss of a significant number of Armenian dialects, said the President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armen Agabrahamian, at the 17th session in Geneva on the export mechanisms on the rights of indigenous peoples. Recalled the siege of 120,000 indigenous Armenians in Artsakh last year, people who were deprived from the world for seven months. After the blockade, on September 29, 2023, ethnic cleansing took place by the Turkish Azerbaijan Armed Forces, which expelled 120,000 Armenians from their ancestral lands. Armenians who spoke a dialect that is now in danger of disappearing. Mr. Armenia Gabrahamian emphasized that the return of the land is a mandatory necessity for every nation that wants to preserve its genetic resources. Thus, the principle of the right to self-determination makes sense, according to the President, if we want to stop the process of disappearing indigenous languages. The President noted that they did not use this principle to translate the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and adopt it in the Constitution. Humanity will not survive if indigenous languages and people disappear said President Armen Agabrahamian, summarizing his speech. To strengthen the participation of indigenous peoples in the United Nations, point nine, the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosyan, first of all thanked the MEDPA party, which continues its dignified word inviting indigenous peoples to inform about their situation regarding the gross violations they face and to contribute to the search for mechanisms to create conditions for a better future. She emphasized that dialogue is necessary to raise the voice of peace, particularly in the Human Rights Council, to uh, reaffirm that conditions of peace exist and are enshrined in international peace treaties to be applied in events of wars and ongoing genocide, which should be applied in case of wars and ongoing genocide. Continuing her speech, Ms. Lydia Margosian said that the indigenous peoples should go to a new stage and fully participate in the discussions, resolution, decisions, because the discuss issues directly relate to them and with their contribution it is possible to find compromise solutions. Advocating for the strengthening of the participation of indigenous peoples in the UN system is a vital for general welfare when the denial of their existence, the denial of the existence of the language, discrimination, racism, the killing of their population is their daily routine. She said and added that this human humiliation should be corrected in their highest UN framework. Ms. Lydia Margosian emphasized that in 1987, the resolution of the European Parliament adopted in June, which states that the people subjected to genocide have no right to any compensation mechanisms and cannot present any political, legal or material demands to their executioner. This is the smallest thing we can do for those nations that have become orphans and whose descendants are present here to hear the cry of their ancestors who were displaced and annihilated, said Ms. Lydia Margosian, summing up the speech. Congratulatory message of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian, to the newly elected President of Iran, Masoud Bedeshkian. Your recent election to the Supreme Magistracy led me to offer you my sincere and warm congratulations on behalf of the Armenian people of Western Armenia and its institutions. Allow me to consider this opportunity the establishment of strong ties as part of the continuity of our shared history and the deepening of our relations which have lasted over a millennia. Lydia Margosian, President of the Republic of Western Armenia. On July 13, the speech of Armenu Isaacan took place, the spokeswoman of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia. She referred to the speeches of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian, and the President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armen Agabrahamian, at the 17th session of the Export Mechanisms on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples held at the United Nations in Geneva. In her speech, Ms. Lydia Margosian particularly raised the issue of deportation after the illegal occupation of Western Armenia. She also talked about turning the UN Convention into a binding document on the rights of Indigenous Peoples. 
President Armenia Gabrahamian also spoke about the study of occupied Western Armenia and Artsakh. The President noted that after the First World War in 1920, with the Treaty of Severus, which was signed and implemented by the Allied and United Forces, Turkey, as a result of the genocide of native Armenians in Western Armenia, recognized the Armenian state and its sovereignty. In her speech, the speaker also highlighted the fact that Ms. Lydia Markosian, during the regular session, reminded that Armenia Gabrahamian was the first to open the doors of the United Nations for them to continue today representing our rights as indigenous people. In Geneva, from June 18 to July 12, the 56th session took place of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Within the framework of the sessions, interactive dialogues and panel discussions were also addressed to the human rights situation in individual countries. The permanent representation of Eastern Armenia made 29 main and reply speeches, as well as joined 23 joint statements. They touched the issue related to the blockade of the Lachin Corridor and ethnic cleansing of Artsakh. The attention of UN member states and structure was drawn to the problem of Armenian civilian and prisoners of war held captive in Baku. The extrajudicial killings, tortures, missing and forcibly displaced persons carried out by Baku cases of vandalism against cultural and religious objects, extreme manifestations of Armenians' hatred and sowing of hatred. It was emphasized that Baku does not implement the legally binding decisions of the International Court of Justice. He also spoke about Baku's occupation of the sovereign territory of Eastern Army attempts to falsify and rewrite history and territorial ambitions towards our country. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Yusra Zeya visited the Genocide Memorial in Armenia, accompanied by U.S. Ambassador Extraordinary Planet Potentiary Christina Quinn. The director of the Genocide Museum Institute presented the history of the creation of the memorial complex. Ms. Zeya led a ref at the memorial to the victims, and the guests put flowers near the turn of fire and observed the minute of silence in their memory. The guests from the USA were escorted to memorial at the back of which, in special niches, a number of foreign public figures who raised their voice of protecting uh, summarized against the mass massacres of army and the genocide carried out by the Turkish government in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Small jars full of salt they come from the graves of politicians, intellectuals and missionaries. They also presented the history of the Park of Remembrance and noted that the first tree was planted by U.S. Senator Robert Dole in 1997 in memory of genocide survivor, American-Armenian surgeon Hambar Kelikan. The members of the delegation also visited the Genocide Museum, learning about the permanent and temporary exhibitions. Yusra Zeya made a note in the Memorial Book of Honored Guests. Eighth Batumi Municipality Cup International Chess Tournament has finished in Batumi. Armenian chess players returned from the Municipality Cup with 19 medals, six of which were gold. International Master Stefan Pogosian, Polina Kabak, Menua Hakopian, Veronika Khachatrian, David Baldasadian, Araik Gavrian, Gor Grikorian, Angelina Mirakian, Mikhail Saksian became the winners of the tournament in different ranking and age categories. Chess players of Eastern Armenia also have three silver and three bronze medals. National television of Western Armenia, being faithful to its principles and viewers, continues its uninterrupted work with new approaches. As we already know, our television does not engage in self-promotion. It mainly broadcasts political and other contexts related to the history, present, and future of Western Armenia, as well as topics that raise various issues. We also present the political transition of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the National Assembly, and other structures in a transparent and accessible manner. Dear compatriots, with your support, the possibilities of our television will expand and strengthen even more. We are strong together. This was all for today. Goodbye.